the how we shy away, come to take the throne. To conquer world powers, bring Jake the home. I'm quarterbacking like Jake DeLone. Like Mount Rushmore, I got a face of stone. All right, first and foremost, we give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh. We do so in the name of his only begotten son, who the word, and we call Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai. It's the brother, Chief Priest, Alazar Benloy, a.k.a. the Gorilla Hebrew. Brother Captain Tazamah Moth, here to deal with some things, deal with some things in the spirit. Um, you know, these 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 Christian idiots, uh, so-called, they're done. All right, they've been done. They're absolutely done through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemi Shai. Um, it's getting real bad. As it has been from the onset. So the most decorated of the most decorated of all the Christian quote unquote apologists who have called themselves trying to mount an offensive against uh Hebrew Israelism as they have come to call it or classify it is uh who they call Dr. James White. Dr. James White. His son recently had a debate with the ISUPK, um, but it's Dr. James White, quote unquote, right? Um, he made some statements recently that I was made aware of. And he was speaking about Planned Parenthood. Anybody know about Planned Parenthood? What does Planned Parenthood do? What is it? Planned Parenthood's specialty? Being the enemy of black people, murdering black babies that's the that's the the goal like the brother said abortions so as y'all some of y'all may know these these christian apologists are vehemently against abortions they're vehemently against planned parenthood okay um vocab malone what's my man jeff durbin okay jeff durbin as well as others other quote-unquote christian apologists they they have a mission Mission meaning like a what we, what we would call an operation, where they will sometimes do a ministry in front of Planned Parenthood to encourage people not to go in there and murder their children, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and they oftentimes get into verbal disputes with uh, abortion advocates, quote unquote, pro-choice advocates, which coincidentally are always white women. The black woman is the main one in there murdering a child, but only the white woman wants to come to advocate. That should tell you a lot about the whole abortion thing. If the white woman and white people are so behind it and white people want it so bad, that's to let you know it's to your detriment. That's the first thing you should let you know, because everything else that's to your benefit, they don't want to have. You had your own society during the time of integration. You were able to get something. The white man did away with that. Right. You were able to own a home at a certain period of time and in a much simpler fashion and form than you can now. Right. I was just talking to brother Sergeant Shamar. How old did you get Sergeant Shamar? <laughs> 35 years old right 35 years old and this brother knows only a very few brothers and sisters that he knows from his family who he grew up with that own a home do his dear parents own a home no right see but when you go to your grandparents generation they own homes everybody grandparents own a home why don't your parents own a home why don't you own a home you see what i'm saying because of the the institutions that were in place that were enabling us to do so have been torn down the game has been changed and the odds are typically stacked against us correct so understanding that and, and white people have been at the helm or been the, the biggest advocates of all of those things that have led to that reform that has gendered such a negative um effect in our communities right so your, your racist banks that won't mortgage your racist banks that won't mortgage alone, which a, a, a Bank of America just lost a lawsuit about that. And this is this is now not a like a lot of this stuff that we've been saying that your parents been saying that old brothers been saying around the hood for decades. Now they're finally Time Magazine is covering the Washington Post, the New York Times are doing articles about it saying, yeah, I mean, at this point, the numbers are just so staggering. That there has to be admittance to the odds have been stacked against black people that own homes, Hispanic people that own homes. Period. There's no denying it. There's no plan with it, right? Yet and still, um, James White says that you know we shouldn't ask for rep reparations. We'll get to that maybe in a minute. That's not even what I want to deal with because that's just asinine. Um, 
What I want to deal with is statements that he made in regards to Planned Parenthood. Of course, again, like I prefaced, he's vehemently against Planned Parenthood. And he acknowledges. No, he's not. He's not against Planned He's not against Planned Parenthood. The whole plot is a black Christian said, I don't feel safe in my church. Well, well no. Anymore. But I say they are against Planned Parenthood, it, though. But but what he said was. That's not necessarily the, the point no, that no, he made what there. What he was saying was, is, so you want to vote for Hillary Clinton who kills black babies? So that he wasn't he wasn't condemning Planned Parenthood. He was just saying. Well, no, that's true. But they're as a whole, their stance is against Planned yeah, Parenthood. No, that's I, what I'm saying. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, no, nah, they, they do videos in front of okay. Planned Parenthood all the time. That, that's why I'm pointing that out. Okay. So he's against it and he recognizes that that something about it. So so uh, go ahead. Uh, uh, make the make the point. Set the point well, back up. The, 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 the black Christian was like, my, my church is predominantly white. Predominantly white. He doesn't feel the, comfortable worshiping with white people. With white Trump supporters. White Trump supporters. So OK. To a kind of presidential thing exactly. so he's like so basically he makes a statement um what, what do you want to would you rather have hillary supporters she endorses the murder of right, black babies right, right. which of course trump is trying to allegedly attempting to stop it which he hasn't stopped abortion he just pushed it back to you can't go past 16 weeks hmm. you see what i'm saying so basically that was the point that he right, made right. lesser it's, basically the lesser of two evils or whatever right. and what hillary's doing is a far greater disservice to um black people i guess is, right. is the point that he was trying to right, make. Right. Okay, makes sense. But he acknowledged there that That's there is a Holocaust, Holocaust huh? that, that Planned Parenthood is waging a black ho a Holocaust on black people. He acknowledges that. James White. He's not saying that that's a conspiracy. He's not saying that we're exaggerating it. He recognizes that there is a targeted genocide against black people through Planned Parenthood. And he recognizes that Hillary Clinton is an endorser or an advocate for that. Hillary Clinton says Margaret Sanger was a great woman who was the founder of Planned Parenthood who said people of color are like weeds. They must be exterminated, right? So he acknowledges all these facts, but can't understand why we're the Israelites. Deuteronomy 28, 68, Exodus 1. That's all I need. According to what you understand, get it out. According to what you understand, James White, to be true that there is a Holocaust being waged against black people in America is all that you should need to know to understand that we're the Israelites. They didn't historically just do this to everybody. This level and this type of population control. Not only do they give abortions, but they shoot sisters up with, with a shot. What's that? Who knows what that shot call is called? Depo. Depo what? Depo pro vera. All right. Who studies words? You got to study words. You got to get into the meaning of words. Huh? Etymology of words. What is pro vera? Who knows what pro is? That's easy. Pre is before. Four. four. Poor is four. Right? Pro is four. Vera is the Latin way of saying truth. Depo is short for depopulate. Depopulate those in favor of the truth. And it's aimed at black people. 74% of the recipients of Depo Provera shots are black women. Facts to depopulate those in favor of the truth. That in and of itself is proof we the Israelites. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. Salakia. Start from the top. Come. It says Deuteronomy 28 verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee. Thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bond men and bond women, and no man shall buy you. One more time, so like you. Kind. Deuteronomy 28 and 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Lord shall bring you into Egypt again. Right? With ships. What do they say to this? It happened in 70 AD? What it, hold on. What did Faithful just say? It happened in 70 AD and 135. This idiot 
What's his name? Mike Perea? Yeah. Mike Perea, this idiot. What? AKA, faithful AKA faithful to God. He's SOG, correct? From, from what is that soldiers of god sons of god, sons of god. i mean they need to just idiots that they need to change that acronym to idiots he doesn't realize the fatal flaw he made when he said that it happened to the israelites in 70 a.d and in what, 130 and 135? 135 135 you know what he did he just shot all of y'all in the foot because he recognized and acknowledged that it happened more than once and that's all we're saying we're not saying that the curses of Deuteronomy 8, 28th chapter exclusively pertain to what's happened the last 500 years here in the Americas. We've never held that. We're saying that, yeah, it happened here in the Americas, and it also happened in times of old. Any time that the nation of Israel fell into sin as a people, we were subject to some or all of the curses of Deuteronomy 28th chapter. Understand first, then rebuke. Y'all don't even understand the position Right. So as soon as Mike Perea acknowledged the fact that it happened more than once, he acknowledged the validity in saying that the transatlantic slave trade also falls under the curses of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. You see that? Give me give me that scripture. Um, Salakia about uh, their own tongues condemning them. It's in Pro uh, Proverbs or Psalms, I believe. Psalm. Baba Kusha. Finish that. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, read. Thou shalt see it no more again. What shall we not see again? The land of Egypt. That's what it's dealing with. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies. Ye shall be sold to your enemies there. Read. For bond men and bond women. First off, let me explain something, right? Now they're going to say, you should, it means you're going to sell yourself. No, that, 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 that rendering. That rendition of translation for that scripture is something that you don't see prominently until the late 1800s into the early 1900s and mid 1900s. There's a reason for that. Can anybody take a wild guess as to why all of a sudden in the late 1800s and early 1900s, they changed how this was rendered and translated to saying that it means you were going to sell yourself and you were going to have a buyer? Wild guess in the room. Not the emancipation. Bro. Well, it, Wait, to, say that again? Is there a reason why all of a sudden in later translations after the KJV in the 1800s and 1900s, this the translation changed to they're going to sell themselves and no one's going to buy it? I would say the uh, the Masoretic text. It had nothing to do with the Masoretic text. The Masoretic text don't read the way they're reading. Don't read in that translation. You see what I'm saying? Don't read to saying... Uh, uh, they're going to sell themselves and there's not going to be anyone to buy them when they sell themselves. The reason is because the transatlantic slave trade happened. Negroes can read the Bible now. We have to change it. We can't just leave this in here. It's going to be too obvious. So all of a sudden, all these other translations that come after the KJV, over 200 years after, they after the end of the, you're in the end of the transatlantic slave trade, now all of a sudden the translation reads different. That's called being divisive. And you wonder why we're, we're, we're not KJV only, but we prefer the KJV for exactly these things, right? And you want to deal with the Hebrew, we'll deal with the Hebrew. First of all, let's deal with the Hebrew, right? Now, what? Now James White, what's this say? Now, it might not be the best penmanship, but what does this say? Matazarium or Mizraim, since you since you don't like the Lashawan Kodash, fine. Mizraim, right? That's what this says, Mizraim. What does this mean? Of course, it means Egypt, but break the word down etymologically. What does this mean, man? It means amongst the rocks or in a tight or enclosed place. I'm lying. Am I? Am I? Am I making this up? No, I'm not. Any scholar in Hebrew will tell you this. That's what it means amongst the rocks, because that's what Tazar is. Tazar is rock. You add the yum at the end. So like where I'm at, Tazar right here. Tazar is rock, right? Tazar, ma Tazar, ma is with. Ma Tazar with the rocks, plural. Yum is plural. It means with the rocks in a rocky place or a figurative Hebraic way of saying in between a rock and a hard place. So that's what we understand Egypt as. Yes, of course, Egypt was a physical location, a geographical location where these this slavery occurred to us, the Israelites. But any place where we're in between a rock and a hard place can be likened unto Egypt. Any place where we're amongst the rocks, we're in an enclosed place. 
We're encapsulated. That goes into Zechariah 5. We're in between a rock and a hard place. We're in Egypt. So that's what it's talking about, man. All right? That's 1,000% what it's talking about. Y'all can say whatever the hell you want. I don't care. The Bible is clear. Precept upon precept is clear. That's something that you will never have an understanding on because you don't have the spirit of God, man, because you're the devil. You have something. Uh, Job 15 and 6. There we go. Thine own mouth condemned Your thee. own mouth of Mike Perea has condemned him. Read. And not I. And not I. I didn't have to say anything to you. We didn't have to say anything. You condemn yourself when you acknowledge that Deuteronomy 28 and 68 happened more than once. Read. Yea, thine own lips. Uh-huh. Testify against you. your own lips, Mike Berea, have testified to the validity of our argument of our understanding of, of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter and the 68th verse. You're out of here. 1000 percent you're through. Uh, Psalm, Psalm 64 uh -huh. and 8. Read. So they shall make their own tongue. Oh, go ahead. Fall upon themselves. Your own tongue fall upon yourself. This is a cycle. Deuteronomy 28, 15 on down is a cycle. Of unfortunate events that would occur to Israelites if they sinned. And any time that we sin, we fall into this cycle. We saw it in, in with the Babylonian captivity, uh, the time where the Philistines reigned over us in Judges, the Moabites reigned over us in Judges, um, uh, uh, certain other Canaanites reigned well, over us. And Daniel said we was under the curse under the, of the David. In, I mean, uh, Moses. Uh, Moses in Babylon, right? So if, if you say, oh, that all happened in 70 AD, it also happened in 600, 700. This is something that continually had even before that, during the time of the Greek uh, 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 captivity or the Greek oppression, even the medial Persians. Was that called a captivity? Yes, it was. So during all these times, we were under the curse of Deuteronomy 28 uh, uh, chapter. All of them not necessarily didn't affect us every single time, but some of them did. We were trapped in that cycle as a result of disobeying the word of the most high God, which is the law. All right. That's clear. Now give me Exodus 1, all right? So understanding and knowing and acknowledging that there is a black holocaust or a holocaust, a, a, a population control agenda, a, a genocide, eugenics being practiced on black people by the institution known as Planned Parenthood that is a government-funded and sponsored institution, an endorsed institution. You recognize that we're the Israelites, James White. Because what happened to the Israelites in that Egypt of old? The same, now, mind you, the Egypt of old, which is what the new Egypt would be likened unto. You can't call a new place Egypt or liken a place unto Egypt if it doesn't have the same things that Egypt had. If it doesn't have elements that are reminiscent of ancient Egypt. Right? So let's find out. Give me that. Nah, start at like 10. Okay, I'm Yeah, that's crazy. That is crazy. What's going on, man? Go about eight. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Exodus chapter one, verse eight. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, uh -huh. which knew not Joseph, and he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel mm -hmm. are more and mightier than we. Uh huh. Read on. Come on, let us deal wisely with them. Let us deal wisely, man. See, because that, that's why white people in the north, quote unquote, north people of the Union, they called it during the Civil War time. That's why they look down on Southern white people and they call them rednecks and they call them white trash. Why they call them rednecks and white trash? Because white people in the South say black people, you walk on that side of the road. We'll walk on this side of the road. Nigga, if you got a lot, I'm going to hang you. I'm going to lynch you. You look at my white woman. I'm going to hang you. I'm going to lynch you, etc. That's what white people in the South do. White people in the North say we can walk on the same side of the road as them. We can drink out of the same water fountain as them. How we're going to deal with black people is cunningly. Read that again. It says, verse 10, uh -huh. come on, let us deal wisely with this. Let us deal wisely. That's where conspiracies come in, which in this case, this conspiracy is a conspiracy that James White acknowledges as real. He acknowledges it, as well do many Christian apologists. They acknowledge that uh, there is a conspiracy against black people. Through Planned Parenthood. Because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to find that out. Reason why there's one in every hood. Period. Right? So we say, let us deal wisely with them. That's how white people in the North are. They're not so overt with the racism. 
They're more systemic. They're more institutional with the racism. They pass laws that get you 10 times the amount of time for a crack rock than you will for the equivalent amount of cocaine in a powder form. Because white people on the weekends, they snort coke. Black people are crack addicts. But even then, the advent of crack and the introduction of it to black people is also something that the Central Intelligence Agency in open federal court admitted to being a part of or had to admit or was proven to be a part of. So all of that is the, the northern white people dealing wisely. That's OK. They can do whatever they want. These niggers. I'm going to we're going to give them every disadvantage. There's there's that meme that's got the black person, a white person, a race, a white person is clear. And you've got all these hurdles. You got a, 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 a pit of piranhas that's going to bite you. You see what I'm saying? That's what we dealing with. Right. So that's the difference between them two. So this is the 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 represents in this new Egypt, the new pharaohs, the rulers of this new Egypt, which are white people from the north saying, hey, we're going to create Planned Parenthood. We're going to just murder these people's babies, but we're not going to directly murder them like y'all want to do in the South. We're going to get them to murder their own children. Officer, Appreciate go ahead. It's the book of Psalms, chapter 55, verse 21. Uh-huh. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. Well, what? We're smoother than butter. We're smoother than butter. It sounds, that's that's that white man now who done look, looked at what they did in the South and they just looked down on it. They, they, we ain't got to do it like that because the white man is taking on a serpentile nature. So that serpentile nature say you ain't just got to be overt with it, with your, with, with your hatred, with your bloodlust for these people. We're going to speak to them smooth as butter. Read. But war was in his heart. But we're going to wage war against them every day. For example, Donald Trump took a picture last year on Cinco de Mayo with a taco salad on his desk and said, happy Cinco de Mayo. I love Hispanics. He spoke good while he passed the legislation and got things ready and started to bring to attempt to bring hell on the tribes of Israel uh, that Spanish speak. And not just Spanish speak, because Levi, the tribe of Levi, the so-called Haitian man, okay, and no, because he done made, Paul is Jamaican. No, when, when a brother say Paul is Jamaican, what he means is the tribe of Benjamin now, after being exiled from Israel and brought through the transatlantic slave tribe by our ancestors, now resides in the West Indian Islands. The chief of them are Jamaica. Was Is Moses Haitian? If Moses is on the scene today, he would be considered a so-called Haitian or maybe from one of the other uh, uh, Franco-West Indian islands, Suriname or French Guyana or something like that. So you mentioned his ancestors. He's going to say... He's a Scot and he was in slavery. Oh, he's a Scot in slavery. Um, the New York Times put out articles recently about how the Irish and the Scottish were not slaves <laughs> and how that's a lie that white people have concocted to try to uh, and, and exaggerated situations to try to uh, uh, diminish and take from the very real. While getting, while getting empathy for the yeah, while getting empathy for the stuff. Well, we were slaves too, and we don't cry. Well, well, were you slaves to the magnitude that we were for the time period? Was the psychological games being played to that level? You understand what I'm saying? Were you being treated with like cattle? No, you weren't. Indentured servitude and serfdom was a, a periodic agreement between two individuals that came to an end. What 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 Scottish man? Had a family, and his wife was sub subjugated to rape at the at, at the drop of a hat by the their lord. And they all had they all had uh, notes. They all had their promissory notes as well to say this is when I'm gonna get, get so, free. Yeah. This is this is the contract. Right. Right. That's it. Did we have that? Well, at, at, at what time did the Scottish man have his child ripped from his hands and sold to the other side of the country to never be seen again? When did that happen? But y'all were slaves. Kiss my ass. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. And, and just the fact that, you know, your children are born into slavery. The, the, yeah, were your children born slaves for life? Right. Yeah. <laughs> when, when did that happen? You understand what I'm saying? And and there were Scottish slave owners of black people and Irish slave owners. Stop pushing the narrative that the Irish and the Scots never owned slaves because that is also a goddamn lie. 
finish that? Or you had a point sergeant? Yeah, no, they, uh, they try to run that same tactic, run the same game with the Holocaust. With the, with the, yeah, we went through a Holocaust. Well, by, by the admission of James White, our Holocaust is far greater than the one the Jewish man went through. Which, of course, we're Holocaust deniers. But hey, even if we entertain the Holocaust and we put it on the table, six million versus, I mean, who could even count? Easily at minimum 20 times that amount, right? Finish that, officer. His words were softer than oil. His words are softer than oil. No, all people, we love all people. All people are, 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 are welcome here, and we're a place of equality where hard work can get you everything that you want. Smooth word. It sounds great. It sounds so great that hundreds of thousands of our people from Latin America, the islands, Central America, come here every day because they believed in the dream. Go ahead. Yet were they drawn swords. Yet as soon as you get here, see, this is funny. I'm, a I'm always going to remember this. Uh, 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 Nicki Minaj and her special, her first special she did on MTV. She said, when I was in Trinidad, I thought America was, it was just castles everywhere. Then she got here and lived in a projects. Then her father became a crack addict. Then he tried to kill her mother and burn the house down with all the kids in it. You see that? It sounded good to come to America, to work. Then you got to America, there wasn't work. There was hell. There was oppression for the tribe of Benjamin that came here, just like it was for any tribe that's here or came here. Then your father gets on dope. This is all his plan, right? Go ahead. Why he spoke good to you. Go ahead. That's it on that. That was in your point? Let's go back to Exodus. Start back at verse 10. Uh-huh. Come on. Well, Exodus 1 and 10. Come on. Let us deal wisely with them. Uh-huh. Lest they multiply and, and it come to pass. So this is why they put in what James White spoke about, Planned Parenthood. Let us deal wisely with them, lest they be great. They want to suppress our numbers. We're, we, we fluctuate in between 12 and about 14, 15, 16 percent of the population. And have been for 30 or for since the 70s. Why? We should be growing in population like the rest of the populations. Why aren't we? Because of abortion. That's the only reason. Le they say literally, if it wasn't for the legalization of abortion, the black population would be double. It's at approximately, I'm not saying this is an exact number. I'm not trying to number Israel. All right. They approximate it's about 44 to 45 million black people in the United States of America right now. Right. So let's say it was double. It'd be about 90 million. You understand what I'm saying? Then now there's uh, about, well, uh, uh, about, probably about 50 million Latinos, they say, and Native Indians. So we're talking about 150 million people. That's a lot of people. That's too much to deal with. You see what I'm saying? So what do they do? They implement a, a, a population control system to stifle our growth, right? But and then they come into the schools and they and they try to indoctrinate sisters at the schools to uh, 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 get on birth control, do this and do that, because. They can't stop these uh, our young people from having children because we just keep doing it. This is why I brought this article out a year or two ago. I, I just bring an article out, a conspiracy article. I went to the United States government grant website to show that the United States is offering a quarter billion dollars for people to go and introduce a Planned Parenthood-like program into Haiti. A quarter billion dollars, $250 million dollars to legalize abortions in Haiti and, and start aborting Haitian babies because the the the, uh, 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 the life expectancy in Haiti is very low. We spoke about this. That's also according to biblical prophecy. It is low, but the population of Haiti is enormous because young people keep having babies. They just can't stop us from having kids. That's the prayer. It's like the Israelites. That's what the Egyptians were afraid of. We can't stop these niggas from having kids. They make jokes and, and they make us a proverb and a byword about black people having kids and Mexicans, Hispanic people having kids. And you hear it more so about Hispanics. But if you look around, it's the very same thing you can say about Hispanics. You can say about black people. Both stereo the stereotype is universal for all 12 tribes. 
right? So with that being said, what are they doing? They want to introduce these systems to kill your children, right? So read that part again. It says, come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and it come to pass. Let's create an econ a, 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 a economic instability in their community <coughs> that will make it hard and very difficult to have and take care of children, right? Back in the days, the man went to work, the woman stayed home, minded the house. Now we create an environment where both parents have to work. So there's no supervision for these children in their early developmental ages or the supervision that they provide in daycare have astronomical prices. So it's unrealistic to even do it. You see what I'm saying? Let's make let, let let's create a, a, a there's an article that just came out on this about non-committal, how non-commitment is so big right now, how it's like almost becoming impractical for couples to exist. Right. It's almost impractical now. They have created this entire environment that'll make that makes women go, I don't want to have a baby. I might have to raise this baby on my own. This nigga might bounce. We're not even in a committed relationship. He's doing what with whoever. We're just having sex on the side. They have created this whole environment and culture that makes people not want to have babies. So you're more likely to spend three hundred dollars to murder that child officer. And then, and then you know you have the fear of marriage out of wedlock i mean having a child out of wedlock mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so now men are taking longer to have a child mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying because they worried about you know well uh, even the women worried about getting pregnant you know at an early age getting pregnant know. this dude ain't gonna be the one i'm gonna be with this gonna stifle a good man from coming to my life because he's gonna have to take care of somebody else's kids which a nigga ain't want to go they've done i mean it's we're just t scratching the surface here right, right. the layers are deep for how they are trying to create an environment where you almost would be stupid to, to say, I'm not going to kill this baby. That's the environment that they've created. This is them dealing craftily, just as they did in Egypt. So what does this prove? That we're the Israelites. Because it said that the Israelites were going back into Egypt. They would be in a condition and in a situation similar to that of ancient Egypt. Where the, what's part of ancient Egypt? Your population being controlled. Your youth being killed. Instead of just, they, they one up the Egyptians, no, we're not just going to wait till the baby dies, see if it's a boy and kill it. We're just going to kill it before it gets to be born. We don't care if it's boy or girl. Right? Go ahead. Going back. These this are the new Egyptians, the Neo-Egyptians, white people. Okay? They've done, they, that's why they worship Egypt. Right. What happened? Who know the first, who would know what started Egyptomania? Napoleon. Napoleon going around the world conquering every damn thing. He goes to Egypt. He sees a sphinx. He sees a pyramid. He just falls in love. And he studied the things of Egypt. And that inspired more white people to study the things of Egypt. And that made them want to copy everything of ancient Egypt. That's why you see it on your dollar bill. So they have literally created a new Egypt. And they call it America, man. Right? So go ahead, Salaki. It says, lest they multiply and it come to pass. That when they are falling out any war, uh -huh. they join also unto our enemies. They were afraid that we were going to rise up against them. What were gl glimpses of this happening? In the 80s, there was conflicts between Libya and America. That's when Muammar Gaddafi started bringing black people from America over to Libya, educating them, arming them, giving them money, etc. That was an example. They were afraid of stuff like that happening. There's rumors that communists funded certain civil rights groups going back to the 60s. This is what they're afraid of. And especially it makes sense that communists were funding certain civil rights groups in the 60s because in the 70s is when abortion became legal. You see what I'm saying? That's what was going on at that time. So that makes perfect and total and absolute sense. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. It says... When there followed out any war, they join also unto our enemies uh -huh. and fight against us uh -huh. and so get them up out of the land. That's right. Because let's say uh, uh, if, if the, the, the uh, Arabs in North Africa and in, into the Levant that were on one accord wanted to come against America and they wanted to empower black Americans. Um, I don't America might not be here today. It might be someplace else. And we all might have been woke up, been born into Islam instead of uh the various 
dom- denominations of Christianity that we were born into. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. You want me to keep going? Yeah, go ahead. Keep going. Verse 11. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters uh-huh. to afflict with their burdens, uh-huh. and they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, uh-huh. Python and Ramses. We built, we built America. Quiet as it's kept. We was working on the railroad all the live long day. Not only us, but we did that. We built that White House. We built up all this stuff. You see what I'm saying? Go ahead. Verse 12. It says, but the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. But guess what? We still ha- we still was having babies. We still was doing our thing. Jim, the slavery ended. Then here comes Jim Crow. They're hanging us. They're lynching us. They're marginalizing us. We still having babies. We still growing. They do. They coming with the census every ten years. They can't believe it, right? Go ahead. It says they they thought they was gonna do us like certain other peoples who had just totally been damn near obliterated or exterminated, but they had no ability to do so. Go ahead, because of the Most High God is with us. Go ahead. Go ahead, some officer. Look at the Aborigine. See now, here's what's funny. You see, I posted this article on Facebook. Because everybody knows that the uh, uh, Hamites in South Africa is done with the white man. They're kicking him out. So Australia is proposing expedited uh, uh, refugee status for South African whites to come to Australia. Then I posted the status. I said, y'all better hope the uh, Aborigine don't get the same idea. But they're not worried about it because of the number that they've done on the Aborigine. Also, quick jab now. I want everybody to keep this in their, in their, in their bag of tricks for these comedic cats, these Egyptologist cats. Scientists confirm the civilization of Aboriginal Australia is the oldest civilization in the world. That's what science now says. See, it's, see, this is the thing about them loving, quote unquote, the white man's science. We say the white man's science. Of course, the white man does not have a monopoly on science, but white scientists and mainstream science. That's the white man's science that ignores truth and pushes theories for an agenda. Gender rather than empirical and absolute fact and true scientifically for the record now it's saying that the aboriginals have the oldest civilization in the world so now when you put all that weight into that and now you can't say what are you going to say well the white people are just doing that for their own agenda. these niggas ain't white they blacker than the african man they're, they're the aboriginal they're a whole different color than you've ever seen they like a damn black maroon you see what i'm saying so what 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 agenda are they pushing there? What, what's the great that white people don't gain anything from the aboriginals possessing the, the uh, oldest um, civilization in the world? This is what they're saying according to their flawed theoretical science. So when a nigga tell you Egypt is the oldest civilization on earth, no, it's not. The aborigines have the oldest civilization on earth. It's a scientific fact. Update your science. According to the white man that you worship. Go ahead, select like it. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Uh huh. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. They're grieved. The white man is grieved at seeing you black and Hispanics every day. They're grieved. They want you dead. So what do they do? They put build abortion clinics in your neighborhoods. The Jews that run this, the so-called Jews, fake Jews, the synagogue of Satan that runs the music industry, ensures that the music that gets the most airplay only promotes the most cancerous of activities. Black on black genocide, drug usage, whoremongering, pimping, these types of things. That's what's promoted. If you're not talking about that, you're not going to get a major record deal and be pushed through mainstream media. Right? So now, if you get pushed through mainstream media, that means everybody who's aspiring to get to that position and wants to be a part of the rap art form what are they going to do? They're going to mimic or talk about the things that they're seeing. Because you got artists like Future, who's one of the biggest artists on the planet Earth right now, who says that he doesn't use these drugs, but he makes records about them. You see what I'm saying? Why does he do that? Because that's what has catapulted him to the position that he's in as one of the top guys on Earth. If y'all remember T-Pain, we, we, me and Sarge and, and Officer Bazak was just talking about this on the way here. T-Pain used to be and then they brought in future to replace. Pain wasn't making drug addict music all the time, right? So we were just listening. T Pain did a remix of Cardi B song with Twenty One Savage. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Some of y'all, right? 
He showed you that you to this day. The ain't, ain't the future now. Right, I love future. Right. T Pain is hit. This dude has got is making hits still, but nobody cares because Esau has pushed future to the forefront. This is the guy you listen to, who's not as talented as T Pain, right? But why? Because he's Percocet, Molly Percocet. I love the he he got a song where he says I, he's talking to a, a female. That's why Sierra left him for Russell Wilson. He's talking to a female <laughs> and he said, "I love the dirty more than you, dirty Sprite." Lean, I try uh, the, over you, over my family, over the woman that I love. I'm a sip lean over you. That's why he's over T Pain right now because T Pain is not singing and not saying that he's promoting positivity, but he's not promoting being a junkie either. You see what I'm saying? So, this is what this is this is all the various forms of what they're doing because abortion is just one agenda, right? There's they have to come with a multi pronged attack to stifle our, our growth as a population, soldier. And they are many, and as it says, and as it says, we're not ignorant of it. Right, right, God, God, uh, Martha's Zion, Martha's Zion, because we're 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 what are we? We're amongst the rocks. We're in between a rock and a hard place. Go ahead. Up. This week, this week on Channel Ten News, there was a <laughs> KUSI. Nine. That's nine. Nine's KSI selected. Yeah, yeah. That's ABC 10 so like could have been, I don't know. It was on it's San Diego News. Mm -hmm. It's facts. One of the news channels. I'm watching an interview facts. how a, a cop, that right now in San Diego, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're having an incentive program mm -hmm. to, ar for, to arrest people Black. in the Southern Division. Yeah, in the Southern Division. That's it. That's right. They're, they're a reward. reward. There's, a re there's a reward to lock... The people up in the southeast. The literal yeah. point system. You have half point, full point, two points, or whatever the case may be. And the the cop, he he um he was dressed in black. They uh, they um they hit his voice, mm -hmm. like, gave him a new voice. Yeah. He's talking about how immoral it is. Yeah, he uh, blowing the whistle. All for the the persecution of the black people. Exactly. It's set it's set to base incarceration, which this is we've been doing this is because San Diego already what last year had to admit. That yeah, they pull more, more black people and Hispanic people over than white people. Oh, that they in fact do it, and that white people are actually more likely to to have illegal things in their car than black people. Right. So Go ahead. Last point. I was in Carlsbad today. I'm mm -hmm. running red lights. Yeah. I'm, I'm not no stopping. problem. <laughs> there's, no, there's, there's not. There's not a problem. I was at my I was at my grandma's house on Skyline last month. I got a ticket for coming out of the driveway the wrong way. You know. <laughs> There, hey, what, what, hey, what, 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 what did my man say? What did, what did Indubu, Indubu say? Uh, 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 kill my daddy. They are over yeah. <laughs> yeah. policed. Yeah. It's a fact. It's hard. Yeah, now, um, and I just wanted to point out, um, also too, uh, because right, Catherine about uh, this is happening by the Egyptians, right? Mm -hmm. When we're in the Lisbon, but uh, this, this, uh, if you go like to Psalms. Right, it shows you that all nations conspired. Yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not limited. Right, right. It, it's, it's, it's. I mean, because this is ancient Egypt. The Edomite, the so-called white man, but the white man has conspirators. Stores. He has West Africans identified there. He has Asian conspirators, and he has a uh, 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 quote-unquote Arabic conspirator. Pursuant to that, which we'll get after this. Uh, all. Go ahead. Uh, this is the book. Micah, verse 1. Woe to them that devise iniquity and work evil huh? when the morning is light. They practice it because it is in the power of their hand. Uh, read on. My bad. So I can actually, never mind. I'm like, I got my joint. Go ahead. And they covet fields and take them by violence. See, this, this now, we got to deal with context. That's talking about Israelites. When y'all read Micah 2, that is not talking about the, what the white man does to us. That's talking about evil Israelites and what we were doing. This is what gets us put in on a slave boat, us treating each other like that. So when Christ Yahweh came and said, do unto others, he's saying, don't do this. Because we did this to ourselves. Jeremiah 34 talks about Israelites enslaving one another. These are things we're not supposed to be doing. So us doing these things gets us put in the position we're in now. 
got us put in Babylon. Read Jeremiah 34, top to bottom. What Jeremiah's message to Israel is, the Most High is saying, if you don't let all your Israelite slaves go, this is the last straw. All the Israelites, y'all read All the Israelite slaves go, then they took them back. What happened? The Most High put us directly into Babylon. Directly into Babylon after that, right? You see what I'm saying? So that that's that's something that we've done to one another. So again, that proves that when it's talking about love your enemy, all these various things, it's talking about because this is something that we have serially had the problem to do over the generations to this very day. Right? I just see from LA is talking about man, y'all let the white man do whatever you want to, but another black or another Hispanic do something and you're gonna go kill his ass, man. See, we need to learn to love each other and to be forgiven to one another. That's something that we have not learned as a people, and that's something that the Israelites had a continuous struggle with, and we see it all over the Bible. So that's what Yahweh Shai Christ came to give, the message that he came to deliver unto us, all right? But these Christians have tried to make this about them. When Yahweh Shai, who you inwardly call Jesus Christ, never cared about you, never died for you, never had a message for you, never went to see you, all right? Officer Yahweh Shai. <laughs> do a drive by. You, you think the nigga Jesus? That's it. You you hey, you think the nigga is Jesus? That that and which is one of the most powerful and profound and true statements. You will not harm him because you hold him in his high esteem as if he's God. That's how you look at. Him. So you who would harm God? Why would you try to harm God? Nobody believes in God more than Negroes and Latinos. So we don't do that. You see what I'm saying? What, what, but what will we do at a drop of a hat? Murder and kill one another. You see what I'm saying? Instantly. Go ahead with that, uh, Cap. Going back. Um, start back at verse 12. Uh -huh. The more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Officer. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. Uh huh. They were grieved at us, right? Read. And the, and the They hate looking at us. A lot of them, man. They hate all our niggery. You see what I'm saying? They hate our culture. Right? Can you, you guys, you'll see me asking for reparations. They hate us. They look at it like, like, is it just far fetched? Or, or, or let's deal with the brother now that, that, that led him to say the, the things that he said about not wanting to worship in it in with, with this mostly white with Trump supporters. He's got, the right He's got the right idea, but it's like, my dude, like, like, is it unreasonable? All white people. Is it unreasonable that because of our, the race relations of the last 500 years that a black person may not want to be a part of an institution that's headed by white people? Is that like a is are we are, is a nigga crazy for wanting that? You know what I mean? Like white people, Trump, Trump supporter white people. You see what I'm saying? Like is that maybe I should I maybe should feel uneasy and I might want to kind of go worship amongst my own. Maybe I would feel more comfortable. He said, but here's the thing about it, James White. You're taking all this issue. He's still going to worship your fake faggot white Jesus. You see what I'm saying? He just wants to worship that faggot amongst other white people. That's all he wants. You see what I'm saying? But no, there's a problem with it. Go ahead. Nah. It says in the no water. I don't, think, I don't got no cash. Uh, you get the water. Got that natural mineral. <laughs> the minerals added for flavor, right? Yeah, no, I'm good. It's just the brother gonna take care of it. Most high Christ, yeah, that's crazy. Uh, <laughs> oh, little zing, little zinger. Look at that, huh? Uh, yeah, some with some flavor too. Bob shot. That's hair. Yeah, they they gotta clean that that uh that cooler but go ahead all right it says and the egyptians made the children of israel to serve with rigor with what with rigor they rigorously oppress us the egyptians as we multiplied the egyptians rigorously oppressed us as we multiplied in america the white man rigorously oppressed us what's an example greenville Tulsa, oklahoma we grew we we went and lived separately per the request of the white man as we lived separately her request of the white man, we grew, we became an economic power in that enclave known as Greenville in Tulsa, Oklahoma. 
How did the white man repay that? By firebombing us. You see what I'm saying? That's what happened. There was a firebombing that went on. People talk about 9-11. The first time an aircraft was used in a terrorist attack in America was state-funded agencies and white people gathering tiki torches like Frankenstein was in town, killing black people for simply flourishing economically and minding our own business. That's the equivalent to what was happening to the Israelites in Egypt. And these parallels are so obviously connected. We are so obviously have so many things in common with these people that how can you possibly deny it? Now we want to talk about college degrees. We want to talk about education, etc. James White, a cousin of mine, is head of religious and African-American studies at Howard University. He's a graduate of Princeton University. Is that enough accreditations for you? Doctorates in these fields. Eddie S. Glaude, look him up, wrote a book called Egypt. I might have it in my bag called Egypt. And in that book, he scholastically shows the endless parallels between us and the ancient Israelites and the story of the Exodus and how there is literally no story in the world that we can relate to more than that, but you're going to deny that we're the Israelites? It's undeniable that we're the Israelites. Go ahead. Bag? My bag? Where's it at? He's on time. Take, take that. So I'm asking for a bag. This Go ahead. Verse 14. And they made their lives bitter with hard bondage mm -hmm. in mortar and in brick yeah, and in all manner of service in the field. Uh -huh. All their service wherein they made them serve was with rigor. Was with rigor. Right. Go ahead. Verse 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was uh, Shifra. Uh-huh. And the name of the other Pua. Uh -huh. And he said, When when ye do the office of a midwife uh -huh. to the Hebrew women and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then ye shall kill him. Uh-huh. You see that? Kill him. Population control, murdering babies. This goes back to ancient Egypt. It's the same thing that we experience in ancient Egypt. When thou seest a son, what? It says, But when thou seest a son, uh huh. Then you shall kill him. Then you shall what? Kill him. Murder black Hebrew Israelite babies. These are other black people that did it. White people got a hold of this notion in the Neo-Egypt, and they did it better. They did it more wise. They did it more cunning. They did it through Planned Parenthood. Right? Go ahead. But if it be a daughter, uh -huh. then, shall, then she shall live. Why? Because a man establishes a nation. This is clearly something that was recognized by them by saying, if they don't have men, they don't have a nation. If we, if they have women and their women marry us, then their women have given birth to our children and are continuing our lineage. Because it's not about bloodline, it's about seed line. It's about lineage because you are the nation of your father, right? So now let's go back to Deuteronomy 2068 again. Deuteronomy 28:68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Egypt again. What we experience in Egypt, population control, rigorous hard bondage, oppressive uh, overseers and masters. We're going to go through that again, Dwarah. We're going to experience this again. Read. With ships. It's, but we ain't going to walk in and out like last time. We're going to experience it this time via ship. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Uh-huh. Thou shalt see it no more again. I told you you weren't going to go into the actual land of Egypt. He makes this promise in earlier chapters of Deuteronomy. Read. And there ye shall be sold. There ye shall be sold. You're going to sell yourselves. That's not in the Hebrew. Quit playing, man. You shall be sold. If, if I'm sold, what does that mean? Somebody sold me. And I had to be what? Bought. Uh, you ain't selling something. It's sold. It happened already. The car is sold. I mean, somebody else has the car now, right? Read. Unto your enemies. Uh huh. Unto who? Unto your enemies. Who are white people? Read. For bond who are white people? Oh, unto your enemies. Your enemies. Read. For bondmen. Uh huh. For what? For bondmen. Bondmen. That's what we were. Read. And bond women. And our women were slaves. Read. And no man shall buy you. No one so came and redeemed us. No one came and 
uh, what is redeemed? You redeem people through buying because you can literally come and buy somebody out of slavery. But nobody did that to us. Go ahead. Up. So they're trying to say we put ourselves up for sale. But no one but came. Nobody bought, us. nobody bought us. The oldest way of life on the planet Earth to, uh, is the oldest, the oldest two things on the planet Earth is prostitution and slavery. But nobody bought us. Did we just wasn't good? It, it, I get hard a, work in hey, look, I understand them frail. See, that's why they believe it's some frail white boys that's that's the Jews, because you can see like, well, well, what the hell, Rabbi Finkelstein is gonna, what what good work is he gonna do? He's worthless. That's why he just he just sits in the in the shadows and runs the world. You see what I'm saying? Because he literally ain't no work his ass can do, and he just thinks of ways of how to kill people and extort people and touch people. That's why it's Harvey Weinstein, a Jew. It then touched every girl on his casting couch, God. right or wrong, uh, right? You had a point. No, so like, go. You had some. Yeah, I was gonna say, man. I, I know some 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 OT only brothers that uh, that break it down that way, and um, they even went into it to say, in the place that we was brought to on ships, in the captivity we was brought to us on, on ships, we sell our we try to sell ourselves to the white man, and they and again we always say, uh, 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 last hire first fire. You know what I'm saying? Can't get a job. Unemployment rate in the black community is high as hell. And we go do what? We degrade ourselves, put ourselves in a suit and tie, shave our beard, to try to sell ourselves to this goddamn devil, and they still don't come. Yeah, hey, look, yeah, yeah. We can, we can, it, <laughs> so it, it, it can be what you want it to be, and I'll st we can still fit the bill. Well, where the yoke of iron come? Yeah, That's yeah. Right. Well, where's That's the right. great Jewish yoke of iron? Right. That yoke of iron was put on blacks and Hispanics. Oh no, if, yeah, yeah. Why is there a yoke of iron put on us? Who took our oxen? Who was able to take our kids and sell them away, and we don't see them no more? See, that's why. See, what y'all have done, which you guys hate, and you serially accuse us of doing, is something called what? What's the term, Deacon? I Isegesis, as well as narcissism. <laughs> you guys isegete Deuteronomy 28 and 68. We don't have to isegete it, right? If we're dealing on the streets and we're trying to convey a quick point to a passersby, you may see us isegete or isolate this and amplify this. But from 15 to 68, which is this brother, he loves to do that. This is his area of expertise. He'll have you sitting there reading the whole Dura, reading it over and over and over again, right. exegetically, breaking it down through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You see that point for point, black, Hispanic, and Native Indians have felt every single one of those curses. And there is no other ethnic demographic on the earth you could demonstrate that to be true of. So why would we do anything but conclude that we are the Hebrew Israelites? Yeah, well, I was told today by the Shields Mm. Well, it was said that we're gospel. We're, we, we preach the gospel of race, not the gospel of grace. <laughs> um, well, well, the you Lord can't said, you can't have grace without race. <laughs> the Lord said, "Go wake up the lost sheep that house of Israel." That's race. So, isn't there, isn't there chosen That's race? the gospel. Isn't there a chosen race? I got, I got verse forty-eight. There's no grace. You can't spell grace without the race, man. That's my that's my that's my combative to that statement, right? Go ahead. That's my ace. That's so, my ace. Yeah, that's let's, right. Let's, let's jump up twenty verses. A, a beautiful thing the deacon brought it out, right? This is the same enemies, right? Uh, Deuteronomy twenty eight and forty eight. Therefore, thou shalt serve thine enemies. Uh -huh. All right, we were going to be sold unto our enemies. Therefore, we would have to serve our enemies, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It says, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger. And in thirst and in nakedness and in one of all things. Is this not what happened to us in the place that we was taken to or brought to on ships where we were sold to our enemies that we had to serve and we have to go them, go to them for GMO foods? Yeah, I gotta get dirty ass water. I gotta <laughs> get my clothes from the white store. <laughs> Dead ass. Right? Because because now, and here's the thing, right? If you look on the tags of a lot of these shirts. I'm going to tell you the countries you're going to see on them shirts. You're going to see Honduras on that shirt. You're going to see Mexico on that shirt. And you're going to see Haiti on that shirt. Textiles. Guess who owns the textile manufacturing companies and who profits the most from them? White people. But they set up in Mexico. They set up in Honduras. They set up in Haiti. Who knows why? The workforce. Cheap labor. I could magnify my profit if I don't have to pay people federal minimum wage of america i can pay people substantially less in all these other countries and and and, and maybe jake countries too because what we have to we have to we're subject to the 
the the low uh, wages that you're giving us because we hungry and we thirsty and we naked. If we don't get it, we don't get no we ain't gonna get no food, we don't get no 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 drink, and we don't get no clothes. We'll do anything. We have to you, do it. You, you have in Haiti. Well, number one, everybody knows about. I'm gonna because I don't want to talk too conspiratory. We want to deal with things that are 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 that even you devils have had to acknowledge as fact. Huge UN conspiracy, um, UN peacekeeper troops were in Haiti doing all kind of sexual deviance with, with, with Haitian people. Um, but what were they using in order to do it? Money, and very low amounts of money. But we're so we're so destitute in that land by d divisively, mind you. It was deforested by the French um, as well as um, the trickery that was utilized to put us in debt to the French for whipping their ass, um, which is economically crippled. And not to mention all the invasions and the United States Marine Corps coming in and literally stealing every dollar out of the Haitian National Bank in 1914. So all of these things have happened that have crippled us economically, not to mention also some of our people being corrupt. Um, so our people are so destitute there that they sell themselves for, for low amounts of money. Um, you have eight-year-old girls that literally prostitute for two dollars a day. Why? Because they're they, they they are serving these people in want of all things. You see what I'm saying? That's literally what other people is doing. That. Right? Go ahead. And he, real quick, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck it's because because you're a slave. People who aren't bond who you haven't purchased to be in bondage to you are not going to have a yoke of iron on their neck. Only a slave is getting that place on his neck, so he cannot escape. Go ahead. Until he have destroyed thee. Until he have what? Destroyed thee. Until he has destroyed you. And that's what's happened here. Now, we, I've got to put a yoke of iron on your neck. I put, a, I, I put I do, again, they do it systemically. They do it institutionally. You see what I'm saying? You had a, a precept sergeant. Real quick, real quick. Hold on. It's a lot. Still some more meat on that bone. Verse 49. And the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. From where? From far. A nation's coming from far. From the end of the earth. From the end of the earth, read. As swift as the eagle flyeth. Uh -huh. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Hold on. What are they going to say to this? This is the Romans? Deke? That's oh, the Romans. The what? nation from far is the Romans? It's, no, no. It's the, um, when they came from, whose who tongue you want to understand? Yeah, yeah. Babylon? That's when they came from, uh, uh, um, that's with the northern kings. When they came. Over here with Christopher Columbus. No, 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 but I'm saying, what are they going to say? We understand oh, that. Uh, I've heard Babylon, I've heard Rome. Well, we talked about it. They don't really address the North. Remember, they know about it. Well, no, no it, not, not even that. I'm just, I'm asking what it, they have a answer for this. They're going to say this happened with Rome in 70 AD, yeah. or they're going to say this happened with Babylon. No, the only thing they can say is Rome, but there was a lingua franca, so I don't think they know that. Well, which is fine. They could say it's Rome. They also have to admit that it happened with Babylon, though, even if they said it was Rome. They also gonna have to admit that this happened in Greece with the Greeks. So what does that mean? That this is continually happening. That's right. This happened with the Romans. This happened with the Greeks. This happened with the Babylonians. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say about, about the joke of iron. Although we have so many artifacts, why can we only find that with this time? Yeah, in this time, the yoke of iron. That's what I'm saying. And the point that we're making, not isogeting the 68 verse and saying that it exclusively pertains to the transatlantic slave trade, but going from 15 all the way to 68 and showing that this has happened at least once, and if not a multiplicity of times to us, as we have fallen from the law, such commandments of the Most High Officer. Deuteronomy 28, 45-46, where it says that it'll be upon your seed forever. Come, come, come. Also, somebody exactly read law, that because they're saying that Christ came. Well, we did went into that a couple weeks ago. Okay. For time's sake, we ain't gonna go into that. Okay. Check us from a couple weeks ago. We broke the curse of the law down perfectly through the spirit of power. Y'all by some y'all shot. Y'all have no idea what you're talking about. No idea. Y'all say that Christ redeemed them for the curse of the law, but then say 70 AD is the curse of the law when that's after Christ. Go ahead, read that. Uh which Christ did for the curse of the law, but it, it we our redemption has not been seen that's coming at the point of salvation that's when the redemption redemption salvation deliverance all these things are synonymous go ahead yeah um 
like Deacon was saying, they said we preach the uh, gospel of uh, uh, race. Great, race, not grace, huh? Not grace, right? Another race group. So another hate group, another race hate group. I didn't tell you I read that. So, so oh, what, what happened is, uh, like you said, they, they have different here. Bible translations, right? Uh huh. Sometimes they change it, right, to uh, to benefit them, right? Yeah. To get a better, uh, so their perspective. Yeah, and sometimes it works against them. But sometimes it works against them. Yes, sir. Where it works against them. This is the book of First Peter, chapter two, verse nine. Uh huh. In the ESV, the English Standard Version. That, their favorite one. <laughs> but you are a chosen race. Oh, Wait, so hold on. The Christians are a race? A Wait, the church is a race. I thought it wasn't about race. And that ESP that Vocab Malone loves so much, it says it's about race in the New Testament. Well, that's the James White, uh, okay. Oh, that's what he oh, said. That's why that's why Vocab. Why vocab well, hey, James, what does it say? It says it's about race. Go ahead, read that again. Time, book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, ESV. But you are a chosen. It's, I, it's, what would a Christian say? It's not about race, neither Jew nor Greek. The New Testament, in your authoritative translation, says it's about race. Read it again from the top. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood. I'll praise you, Al Bashan, Al Shai. Go ahead. A holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies. Of him who called you. You can't proclaim his excellency. Only <laughs> only us, the chosen race. <laughs> Out of darkness uh -huh. into his marvelous light. Woo. Hey, hey, hey. James White, let's do this. We'll give you Deuteronomy 2868, and you gotta give us that one. You know what I mean? We don't we don't we, we can we can prove who we are outside of the Without that. So we'll I don't give even you need that, that one. So we'll <laughs> give you that one that it says, Oh, you're gonna sell yourselves. All right, all right. Okay, like, but hey, first Peter. You're done. It's still done. In your Bible. In your own Bible. So what do you want to do? That's great. That's just. It's even Dre, that's fair. You know what I'm saying? Hey, speaking of giving, giving away, we got a new covenant, our old covenant giveaway. <laughs> yeah, and, and on top, and also uh, Vocab Malone, man. Most High got a very special judgment coming from you. Blasphemous demon devil. All right. Oh, and you're an adulterer. Yeah, it's funny. This dude, this, this dude's making a video. A parody video talking about us, nigga. You're an adulterer. You, you, you give me, give me an apocrypher, an adulterer that doted. Give me that in the apocrypher. That's the thing that God hates. First, the apocrypher wanted to let nigga have the JPV upside down. You want to mock us? That's fine. I'm, I'm gonna tell you who's gonna laugh. He in heaven shall laugh at you. All right, and laugh and not feel sorry when you die and your wife dies and your kids die. All right. I'm gonna tell it to you straight like that. You damn demon. I got it. Go ahead. Sirach 25 and 2. Uh huh. Three sorts of men my soul hated. My soul hateth. Hate in the Bible is hate. Go ahead. And I am greatly offended at their life. You got hate? Bring it out. Let it out. I am greatly <laughs> offended at your life, Vocab Malone. Read. A poor man that is proud. Uh huh. A rich man that is a liar. Uh huh. And an old adulterer that doteth. That's you, an old adulterer that doteth, man. According to you, according to your belief, you have committed adultery by stepping out of your marriage, according to your understanding of what adultery is. You're an adulterer and you have nerve trying to make a parody video mocking Hebrew Israelites when you're an adulterer. Give me Hebrews. I, I, I say a sin unto death. You pray not for it. First John is, is adultery not a sin unto death. Vocab, shut the hell up, man. I don't even understand. You got nerve, man. You got a lot of nerve, and you 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 you're an excuse, and you have poorly represented your your community. All right, you adulterer. Read First John five and sixteen. Uh huh. If any man see his brother sin a sin, if any man see his brother sin a sin, which let's is let's 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 take our our, our race based Hebrew Israelite lenses. Let's go back into Christianity briefly. Sure. You see your brother in Christ. Do what? Sin a sin. Sin a sin. Read. Which is not unto death. Which is not unto death. It's it's, it's a sin, and, and, and we all sin. We all fall short. None of us are perfect. It's a Christian understanding now. That's right. Right? Read. He shall ask, uh -huh. and he shall give him life. You, 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 we forgive our brothers, and we love them, and we hug them, we just we hold them, and, and it's, it's we're all in Christ, and it's all right. Go ahead. For them that sin not unto death. That, that sin not unto death. You know, it's all right. You slip. We all stumble. That's right. Go ahead. There is a sin 
unto death. But there is a sin unto death. Read. I do, I, I do not say that he shall pray for it. And one of those sins unto death, unfortunately, is adultery. So for our brother vocab, um, can't pray for you. We shouldn't associate with you. I mean, that's just according to the New Testament. So sorry, brother vocab. We're going to have to excommunicate you from our congregation. That's right. <laughs> according to even your understanding, you're out of there, nigga. Go ahead, man. So lock you back to the point, man. That was an interlude for that demon. As long as you keep getting on them black guys, we'll let you stay in there. Yeah, exactly. Just give the niggers hell. And then every nigga in that damn video, <laughs> you better hope you repent, man. Most High got something special coming for y'all, too. That's true. And J J who's seen Jada Producer's new video? We may play. We, I'm going to do them just like I did the, uh, 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 they got to lie to the people. We're going to do it just like that in a minute, I think. Go ahead. What was we at? We was at Deuteronomy 28. 28. Boom, I hit that. Oh, uh, Romans. Not Romans. like your Revelations 11 and 8. That's right. We're going to go. We're going to read a few verses there. Lie to the people. God, man. I just, <laughs> I, and I can't believe these niggas got the nerve. These individuals got the nerve. <laughs> To think that they don't come in battle with the Hebrew Israelite community. Every camp, every scholar, every individual like that ain't got nothing but time to sit on Facebook and argue. What the hell do y'all think? What did you guys think was you was getting into? You're making a, a, a well-produced, mind you, parody video. We're not de dealing with parodies. And the point of the parody was to say that the only thing Hebrew Israelites do is ad hom. But that's not the only thing that we do. Ad hom is what the argument leads to when you're being so unreasonable that you're ignoring how many times the Holy Bible cuts you. Then it turns into ad hom. Then your kids and you're, you're gay and you're a cracker and you're a devil and all that comes out. When we try to just have a conversation with you, you're so unreasonable, you know, to a lot of brothers. Um, I can say that we dealt, we had two reasonable conversations, but I could also go and show and exemplify if I wasn't kicked out of the group for no reason. I did nothing to get kicked out of the group. I barely had posted in there, but whatever. They kicked me out to hell with you. Don't you realize if you kick out all the heavy hitter Israelites that the group is going to be dead? Well, that, yeah, they, they got me out. Got this brother out. Got me. Every Israelite that comes in there and, and, and it's really swinging sword is getting kicked out. And they take novice brothers that are newer to the truth and they let them in there. And then they wonder why they get hit with ad homs. Because these brothers are still in a, in a in a process, they're not all the way there yet. So if they they know what they know because they have been heard and they've been persuaded in their own mind, but that doesn't mean they know exactly how to mount an offensive or, or defensive properly at this point at this juncture. So then brothers kind of they it, it may appear like they got caught out there. So then they'll resort to the ad homs. That's because they're learning the same way that you guys will criticize us from dealing the same way with Christians on the streets. But again, you can't say that this represents all Christians. It's like we can say they don't represent all Hebrews. It's like this is a brother that's new to the information. You see what I'm saying? Just like we acknowledge that the average Christian that we see walking down the street is not on the level of understanding and cannot mount uh, uh, and, and establish argumentation like a Christian apologist. But both of you guys are nut jobs. Both of you guys don't know the Bible. And both of you guys are going to lose to a spirit of poverty. How about Shemiah Shai? Anyway, that's right. you see what I'm saying? Go ahead. 11, 11, and let's oh, so like you. We're going to start there at 8, but we're going to read. We're going to read. They're, they're scared of Revelation, right? My fault. Um, Except 7 and 9. That's what they think is there. They're, they're, none of the Revelations exist except for the one that they think includes everybody, which that doesn't even work. But uh, seven, 11 and 8, we're going to go to. Um. 12. Go ahead. Revelation 11 and 8. Uh -huh. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. Uh -huh. Of which, the great city. Go ahead. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. This is the great city spiritually called Sodom and Egypt. There is no denying the parallels from Egypt that America displays and the parallels of Sodom that America displays. There is no denying it. Ask any person who's traveled to multi multiple countries. Ask any person. They'll tell you that homosexuality is not accepted or promoted on the level that it is in America. You know they got gay whole television networks in America. Did you know that? And on those gay television networks, they have 
homosexually based advertisement, right? What does that mean? That means I'm, I won't. I don't know if Gatorade in particular has it, but certain brands have it. So imagine the you know the Gatorade commercial that you watch. They have one for gay people. They have one for homosexuals. They have one that's <laughs> Gator. <laughs> Gator. You ever ever the Gator Aid? Well, we have Gay Torade. <laughs> so to have adver advertisements that are, are are literally aimed towards them. Gay cruises, gay vacations, all of that. Just like if you watch BET, sometimes you see like a, 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 a black commercial. You see what I'm saying? Or you you watch the Hispanic channel, you'll see a commercial that they have, but there will be a, 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 a exactly they cater to that demographic. They have that for homo. They don't have that nowhere else in the world but America. You got a gay channel. Go ahead. It says, and their dead bodies shall line the street of the great city. And they're forcing your kids to learn about it in school. This is Sodom. Their bodies, their dead bodies, dead people, read. Which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. And that's this place we're in right now. This is Egypt that we would become to in ships where they would kill our kids and oppress us and cunningly devise all forms of ways that we would self-destruct as a people. Go ahead. We're also, and when that don't work, they'll just say that we they thought we had a gun and just shoot us down in the street. When that don't work. Go ahead. Where also our Lord was crucified. Mm -hmm. And they like crucify the Lord because we are the body of Christ, not the Christian church. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Yahweh Shai, which the temple is built in the fashion of a man's body that symbolizes the body of Christ, Yahweh Shai, that we collectively are members and parts of. So when they crucify us, when they oppress us, when they murder us, when they rob us, they have crucified Christ. Read. And they of the people. And they are the people, read. And kindreds. And kindreds, read. And tongues. Uh-huh. And nations. And nations, read. Shall see their dead bodies. Shall see their dead All the world. This is what Black Panther is about, partially. They shall see their dead bodies. T'Challa saw your dead body. His daddy saw your dead body. Read. Along with the Asians and the rest of the Africans and the Arabs. They saw your dead body. Read. Three days and a half. 350 years. Go ahead. It says, and shall which there's there's precepts on that to show you prophetically how a day can symbolize a hundred years, a thousand years. Read, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. What what do you call figuratively somebody being put in a grave and buried, being laid to rest? We are not laid to rest. We get trampled on, oppressed, enslaved from 1619 to 1969. Go ahead. And they that dwell upon the earth uh -huh. shall rejoice over them. They're rejoicing. They're building their empires. They're living their lives. They're setting up trade and they're doing what they got to do. All the nations of the world. While in the hells of North, Central, and South America, blacks and indigenous are enslaved, oppressed, raped, robbed, and murdered and spoiled. And nobody does anything. Read. And make merry. And, and make merry. Read. And shall send gifts one to another. Uh huh. Go ahead. Because these two prophets tormented them. That dwelt on the earth. Which symbolizes, of course, there's always two prominent witnesses or prophets on the scene, which later represents the uh, uh, kingdoms and the people and the prophets of Christ and the Most High. Right? We torment everybody. You know why? Because the Most High sends us into your country to tell you that you're getting ready to go down. <laughs> that guess what? There's wars and there's rumors of wars and evil and pestilence coming to your country. They hate hearing that. They hate it when we come through and tell them they're so evil that God is going to bring that empire down. So when when they stifled us through putting us in slavery, all the world rejoiced. That's why no one came and got you. Go ahead. Even our own people killed us for that's true. Prophesying. prophesying against them. Yeah, that's right. That's a fact. And all this world, T'Challa and his daddy. That's what people don't understand what Black Panther, that's what Black Panther is about. He said, damn, we just left T'Challa, Black Panther, and they're like, damn, we did just leave him here. These guys are monsters that we created. That's what he said. He, he is a monster of our creation. Yes, he is. Because you sold us to the white man and left us over here and didn't do a damn thing at all. Never threw us a bone. When black people repatriated back to Africa, we, literally, they we created Liberia. Africans didn't create it. Now they live there and they are oppressive to what they call America Liberians. Right? Because they didn't ever give a damn about you because we're not the same people. Go ahead. 
It says, They're the same people that we read about in the Egypt of old. And other people, the Canaanites and the Philistines and other peoples that we have anciently had rivalries with prior to the rise of the white man. Go ahead. That wanted us dead. That wanted us dead. Go ahead. And after three days and a half, uh -huh. the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them and they stood upon their feet. They rose up on their feet. Go ahead. And great fear. After three days and a half, 350 years, that's 1619 to 1969. What was founded in 1969? The original is Israelite School of Universal Practical Knowledge, 1 West 125th Street. That's when we began to stand up, starting with Abba Bivens. That's when we began to stand up on our feet through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah. Read. And great fear fell upon them. When and everybody them. got scared. That's why it's such a fearful thing to see us Negroes and Latinos standing on these corners. They mock what we wear. They're afraid of us when they see us. How many times, everybody in this room that have been to camp, how many times somebody came to camp and said, you scared, well, the security came, you y'all are scaring people. People are afraid. The police come, we're getting calls all day because people are simply afraid that you're just on the corner speaking loud, right? Something that crazy homeless people do all the time. Right. Nobody calls the cops on them until they start. Uh, doing some form of vandalism or loitering on a prominent business. You remember when uh, Nathan and Sam used to go up to a city, they used to be scared. They used to say, are, are you coming for peace? Mm -hmm. Are you why, why are you here? Are you here for peace? They thought Samuel was going to just put a sword and just start killing everybody. That's how they looked at him. He's just coming through. We just go to the street corners. We're not trying to harm nobody. We just want to talk. If you don't like what we're saying, keep walking. Uh. But no, we're frightened, we're startling when we rose up on our feet and did something that through the spirit Abba Bivens pounded into the minds of all the brothers that come from the what, what, what the Christian referred to as the one West vein, or that was a one Wester, that, that the principal thing is to go to street corners and teach the lost sheep of the house of Israel, blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians, their nationality, to come back to their law, statute, commandments, and have faith in their Messiah, who they ignorantly call Christ Yahweh Shah, who looks just like them. They pounded that into our brains, and this is why all the quote unquote one westerns, we do it, but it's of course it's biblical. He read it in the Bible, understood it, and he went out to the streets by himself and was murdered by going out to the streets. Like so many other great prophets in the Bible were murdered doing the work. Let's think about Zechariah. You see? Go ahead. Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they Where we at? verse 12. Uh that's all I do. So lot. They say you wanted me to read 12. So I want you to read 12. Uh yeah. Go ahead. Read 12. Start at the top. So like verse 12. Uh-huh. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them. That's called salvation. That's when your Howard shall return. So you call Christ. <laughs> we gonna hear a great voice from heaven say, What? Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. That's us being delivered by the chariots of Israel. Read on. That, that in, in Revelations 1, it says Christ is coming on a cloud, which I see him coming with clouds. Revelations 1 and 7. Go ahead. And their enemies beheld them. Uh -huh. And you and all you white, James White, you're going to see it if you make it to this point. Your son and, and vocab and all these devils and some of you niggas, too. You two thirds that ain't going to repent. You coons. You're going to see it. You're going to see the elect and their families get beamed up. And you're gonna be sitting there puzzled pursuant to wisdom of Solomon in the fifth chapter. You understand what I'm saying? Give me wisdom of Solomon five, matter of fact. We're gonna go into that in the spirit. This is the book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter five, starting from the top. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. And what? Great boldness. Great boldness. Read. Before the face of such as have afflicted him. All of you so-called white folks and all you other nations, man. And same two-thirds trying to put affliction on your people. They're standing up for you. They're not the only people that care about you. Read. It is. Before the face of such as uh -huh. have afflicted him. As have afflicted him. Read on. And made no account of his labor. I uh -huh. made no account. Why do you want reparations? Make no account of his labors. Read. This is why you hate the apocrypha. Go ahead. When they see it, uh huh. When you see it, if you lucky enough to make it there, and if you lucky enough to make it there, you really ain't lucky because you're gonna feel ICBM missile fire. That's right, and that's what I really hope for you. You got some brothers they praying that James White, Bo Cat Malone, 
die today, die tomorrow. I want you to feel the missile fire to get your true judgment and to wake up a baby with a damn yoke of iron around your neck. Why do I want that for you? Because it's in the Bible. And that's what God has promised the Israelites. So that's what you deserve, you devil. Read. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. With terrible fear. You're going to look at blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, niggas and spicks, get delivered by who the world calls Christ. And you won't. But you claim to be a Christological expert. You're a doctor in theology. And you don't know a goddamn thing. Read. It says, take the Lord's name in vain. Go ahead. And shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. Uh -huh. You're going to be amazed. You're going to say, damn. Those niggers and spicks, they were the Israelites. What in the hell was I thinking? Here I thought that they didn't know anything. And here I am, a doctor in theology. Educated white man. Well off white man. What was I thinking? It was these niggers the whole time. Go ahead. So far beyond all that they looked for. It's it, it's it's totally what we're saying. This is why we're being met with the level of opposition that we're being met with. Because what we're saying is ludicrous. That's why when you see the clip where he's talking about Paul being a Jamaican, he's in hysterics. Like that's an asinine notion. Right? Which, of course, he didn't come from Jamaica in the Bible. But now, of course, as I explained earlier, modern day, the tribe of Benjamin is in those islands. What are you saying? Is there no righteous people in Jamaica? Well, no, I mean, what, he, what he's saying is how can a, 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 a Drew of Tarshish be Jamaican? That's all he's saying, which is true, but you're not understanding the point. No, also, too, not like all Jamaicans are in Jamaica. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. There's plenty of Jamaicans in Europe right now. They're probably one of the pr pr principal demographics of black people in Europe, or Jamaicans, which, of course, he wouldn't know, but devil. But it's going to be so far out of the realm of his understanding. It, it, I mean, it's ludicrous. The, the, what we're saying that we're the Israelites, this is literally the most asinine suggestion to some people, especially these people. Uh, Hosea 1. Go ahead. Verse 3. Uh, slot. Verse 3. And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit. Now, now it's going to hit them that we were right. So the spirit is going to be anguished. Read. Shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision. This is he who we had in derision. Read. And a proverb of reproach. We we They mock us. Literally, if you watch that clip that Coon Dub recently put out, uh, James White is literally mocking Hebrew Israelism, as they've come to call it. Read. It says. Mocking us, meaning that we just we we reading the Bible and we go to more Bible verses. We know more Bible verses. We're familiar with the, pretty much anybody on the planet, but we just have no idea what we're reading. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. We fools accounting his life madness. They, they account our lives madness. Read. This is how we know we're on that right path through the spirit and power. How about you? Because when you re when we're reading the Bible over and over, we're clearly seeing it. We're in the right spirit and they are not exactly what we're saying and doing is documented verbatim in the bible nothing that they do is right read them they can celebrate christmas read and his end to be without honor uh-huh they thought we were just going to be die like every other nigger and speak before us go ahead and and not see salvation because we hate white people who we should hate Go ahead. How is he numbered among the children of God? How are we the elect? The church, the Christian church is the elect. No, the nigger and the spick and the salmon slapper. The prairie nigger, as you have so so uh, uh, endearingly called the native Indian man. That's the child of God. Read. And his lot is among the saints. We're the saints of God. They look at us like, no, it's the church. Mind you, the church, which is predominantly white. Understand white supremacy subtly exists. When they say the church is the saints, the church that's dominated by white people, the church that's majority populated by white people, what they're saying is white people are holy and white supremacy. And we'll teach you niggers to be holy too, but we will always be at the helm of this. Who does K Dub worship? Deacon? James White. James White is an idol of this nigga K-Dub. Mind you, 
James White is Reformed Baptist and K-Dub is Reformed Presbyterian. So he's Protestant, not. I'm sorry. I got it wrong. He's Protestant. He's Reformed Protestant. Who? K-Dub? I think he told me he was Presbyterian. He told me that's the main thing from the rap. He said, I lied. He's not a Presbyterian. Oh, he's a Reformed Protestant. All right. Well, I like there's a huge goddamn difference. It's still going back to Luther. Who wanted to Jesus? Yeah, it's all Luther. It all goes back to Martin Luther. Either way, you have a Baptist in, in James White and a Protestant in Cada. Technically, different denominations. Yet, the the way the average Snicker looks at Michael Jordan, that's how he look at James White. <laughs> like, an, if James White has some shoes, digger. If he has some loafers, if James White has some James White loafers, this nigga would have every number. Right? Because he he looks at him as holy, and he wants to be holy, so he got to follow him, right? Go ahead. That's subtle white supremacy. Go ahead. That's right. It says his end to be without honor. Uh huh. How was he numbered among the children of God? Read. And his lot is among the saints. Uh huh. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth? We have erred from the way of truth. They're gonna recognize. We're trying to get vocab, and you're trying to get James White, Joshua White, to understand that we're the Israelites, and we we know what we're talking about. We got to keep the law, statutes, and commandments, like all of that. And, you know, how how was shot Christ only died for black, Hispanic, Native Indian people, Israelites? We we expect them to understand that. They're not going to understand it until they see you get delivered up in the clouds of heaven, in chariots, by Christ and the angels, and while they sit there. At that moment, they're going to understand that we, the whole time, were the authorities in the Bible. And not a moment soon. Go ahead. Therefore, have we erred from the way of truth uh -huh. and the light of righteousness have not shown unto us. They're going to understand that they were never enlightened, that they were never truly Christian, and they never knew the truth. That we knew it and we had it the whole time through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. This will not dawn on them until they see you get delivered while they stay and await missile fire. Then they'll get it. Then they'll understand Deuteronomy 28 and 68. They'll understand all the breakdowns at that point. Because they'll realize that anything we said, that was the truth. And they didn't know what the hell they were talking about. And at that moment is when I suggest they do my thermonuclear survival tactic, God, God. which is bending over and kissing your ass goodbye. Right. And go ahead. You two can survive much. <laughs> <laughs> you two can survive much. <laughs> go ahead. And the sun of righteousness rose not, unto, not upon us. Uh-huh. We worried ourselves in the way of wickedness mm -hmm. and destruction. Yay. By studying, because studying is weariness, right? That's right. You studied a doctrine that was the way of wickedness and destruction that you call Christianity, that you call Reformed theology. Go ahead. It says, yea, we have gone through the deserts where they lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. You're going to understand when you see niggas and spicks and Native Indians being beamed up. And you sitting your ass put and you ain't being saved, you're gonna see that you never knew the way of God. You never knew the way of truth. All right, go ahead. And the Lord didn't know you either. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> right? Is more said, on that. We have gone through deserts uh -huh. where there lay no way, but as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Mm -hmm. What have pride profited us, or what good had riches with our vaunting brought us? All those things are passed away like a shadow, and as a post that has that hasted by, and as a ship that passes over the waves of the water, which when it is gone by, the trace thereof cannot be found, neither the pathway of the of the kneel in the waves. It's over. It's your all, all that you have is going to be meaningless at that point. You just bend over and kiss your ass goodbye. Sorry, you got Hosea one. Start with about about ten. In the, in the land where it said, you are not my people. Go ahead. Book of Hosea chapter 1 verse 10. Uh -huh. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. That's right. That's why you're trying to control our population. Read. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. Uh -huh. Go ahead. It shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, uh -huh. ye are not my people. You're said, this is what they said. We, they're, This is what they're telling us. They have launched this attack against us, quote-unquote Christian apologists, 
to literally tell us that we are not the people. We've been told that we were everything but the people. We've been called everything but a child of God. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Ye are not my people. Uh -huh. There it shall be said unto at them. Then, at that place, by niggas and spicks on the street corner, read. Ye are the sons of the living power. We are the sons of God. We are the Israelites. Only the people who have been alienated from that and been told they're everything but that can actually qualify as that pursuant to, to prophecy if you believe in the Bible, which you guys allege to do. This is just a proof positive through the spirit and power of Yahweh, wow. Shem, Yahweh Shai, whom we are, which are the Israelites. Who else fits all of this? You mean to tell me you're going to sit here and watch this whole video and say, this nigga's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if you truly believe that, just Man. this book, don't throw that away. This must not. This literally must not have any truth in it if it's not clear that we're the people of it. Sakari. Sakari. We are the children of the one you have. The chosen. Ye are the chosen of the one you have. And he has given his loss to us. Now everything belongs to us. Shalom, what's going on? It's your brother, Chief Priest Allah Zabon Lawyer, a.k.a. the Gorilla Hebrew. And I'm just letting y'all know, I just dropped my official clothing line, Urban Gorilla. Go to UrbanGorilla.com right now to check us out, man, and pick something up. That's U-R-B-N-G-R-L-A.com. We got all kind of items for men, women, children, even infants, as well as fragrance oil, smell goods. You can also check out Hebrew Israelite Clothing Co., another Sakari business on Instagram and Facebook. And as always, you can hit up DeaconSakari.com to get your plug on the scars, the music, and the children's Bibles. Thanks for your time. All praise to the Most High. Kwam Yasharala. Shalom.